Okay, so we're here at the Dubai Air Show and I'm delighted to say that as you can tell, we're at the Joby Aviation Stand and I'm joined now by Anthony Curry, who is their UAE General Manager. Anthony, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a busy few days for you guys. You've had a lot of announcements coming out. Uh, first up, an amazing achievement. Uh, the first city outside the US, Dubai, you've, you've flown one of your craft from one destination to another and it was crude. How big a deal is that for Joby Aviation? How big a deal is that for the sector, the eVTOL sector? It is a major milestone. So to give context, we flew our aircraft from our base in Margam to the Dubai International Al Maktoum Airport. It was a 17-minute uh, flight, 27 nautical miles, and this really shows the aircraft's capability, but more importantly, Dubai's readiness for eVTOLs. The infrastructure was available, the regulatory framework was available, and the airspace was available. So it's really showing you the progression that we are making, both us as an OEM and an operator and Dubai for commercial operations in 2026. Is that ecosystem what makes Dubai the right place to be the first place for these EV tolls to enter the commercial market? Well, to, to lead you know, the world in, in this new uh, air mobility, you need an ecosystem. You need several things to come together. We have the vision, a top-down vision coming from uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, we have uh, the partners, the RTA, the GCAA, the DCAA, and all government entities. We have the infrastructure being built by skyboards, and we have the operators and the OEM, the aircraft that we have, and our operations. Let's talk about those, those skyboards, because there's been another announcement around those as well, hasn't there? Correct. So we've announced yesterday two big milestones. The first one is the completion or topping out of our DXV vertebrate. So 60% of the DXV vertebrate has now been completed and we're still on track for a delivery of Q1 2026. And second, and most importantly, is we've announced publicly the three additional vertiports. So the plan was to have four vertiports for Dubai. We now have the four public vertiports. Uh, we have uh, American University of Dubai, which will cater for both Dubai Marina and Dubai Internet City. We have Dubai Mall, at the Zabil car park, that will cater for uh, visitors, visitors and shoppers coming to Dubai Mall and the Royal Atlantis for guests coming to Atlantis and the Palm residents. So with these four networks, you'll be able to move around the city very easily as early as 2026. Okay, as early as 2026, things are moving fast, but how fast? When am I going to be able to get in one of these taxis? This is the question, it looks very nice. It's, and it, it is, it is very nice. <laughs> As you know, it's complicated. There's a lot of things that need to come together. We are still targeting for 2026. What I can tell you is, what are the different milestones that you'll see from now till 2026 so that everybody knows how we're progressing. After now, we're going to start doing urban operations. So we now flew from Margam to uh, Al Maktoum. We're going to hopefully start doing more urban type of operation. We're going to be testing these vertiports, the DXV vertiport, the Royal Atlantis vertiport. So you'll see us fly in the city. After that, we're going to start seeing non-paying passengers. So hopefully you or somebody else will be able to ride on one of these aircraft, non-paying again on demonstration. And ultimately, this will lead to paying passengers for commercial operations in 2026. You brought up money then. And I have to say, there is a huge amount of expenditure going on here. You know, we're building vertiports, you're creating the aircraft, you're going to be flying the aircraft. People are going to get to go for free at first. How is, what are the finances around this? How is it all being funded? Well, currently, as you know, we're a publicly traded company. We believe that Dubai is an investment city for us. So we're going to continue investing both on the aircraft and in bringing it to life here. Again, this is the, this is the start of a, of a revolution, if I want to say. We're really changing the way we move. So currently, we invest in Dubai, but ultimately, this will make financial sense. People will be paying for the fares when we start having paying passengers, and it will make financial sense for us, for the country, for and for uh, customers. How are your responsibilities divided out between you guys? Uh, there's the Skyports, there's the GCAA. You know, what, what falls to each, each department? Because I imagine there needs to be quite a bit of not just infrastructure, but regulation as well. Yeah, so it was, I would say, in 2024, when we brought this whole team together, both private and public sector, we had to define the different responsibilities and roles very clearly. So Joby is both the OEM, and the operator. So we are applying for an air operator certificate, which we're underway on getting, and we're going to get it next year. Skyports is the infrastructure partner. So Skyports will be building these, uh, these, uh, these vertiports. RTA is overseeing the whole project, and RTA will be the regulator of the air taxi. 
and GCAA and DCA are both the, uh, the authorities that will regulate everything to do with aviation. So I would say quite clear responsibilities, a great partnership between the public sector and the private sector. Okay, two more questions for you. Yes. First of all, what's it going to cost? <laughs> it's a tough one. Again, it's, it's early on. We want it to be as affordable as possible, but as you can imagine, any new novel technology early, it might be a bit more expensive. We have not defined the pricing yet. We want it to be accessible. We believe that in the years to come, everybody will be able to access this type of transportation. We're here at the Dubai Air Show. It's clear the Dubai airspace, both high up and middle and low down, is getting pretty busy, or at least will in the future. How sure can we be that EV tolls and planes and everything else can all live in this airspace at the same time without anyone, yeah. you know, getting into an accident? Well, th there's a couple of things. So one, we've been working with both the GCA and the DCA on their air traffic control and all our models and projections show that we can easily fit into the current airspace without any changes. And I think the greatest example is the, the Margam to Al Maktoum flight. We flew in normal airspace. We also flew into the um, managed airspace of Al Maktoum International Airport. All of that was normal. We didn't have to do anything different. As we continue scaling, as we start you know, manufacturing hundreds and thousands of aircraft, then we will need to install new types of technology, artificial intelligence, so that it's just easier to fly in the skies. But I wouldn't expect this in the foreseeable future. From now till the five years to come, no changes need to happen. And after that, we'll you know, update the systems and we'll be able to fly with everyone else. Anthony Corey, thank you very much thank indeed you. for your time. It's been a great pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks.